Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's an honor as well as a privilege to be with you here today um, to share with you some knowledge and some ideas related to the supply chain. And I believe there is no better place to discuss about supply chain than Yambur University College, as it's the furthest and the only university having a bachelor degree in supply chain, as uh, something you, know, you guys you have to be proud of. So today, um, uh, and before starting, I would like uh, to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Salem and Dr. Samer for the invitation and all the management and uh, the science management department. Thank you very much. Um, I will try to make it short and simple today discussing about the supply chain, which mainly I will be discussing the supply chain logistics sector and its role in supporting the national economy. Looking at um, the vision and the ambition uh, vision of Saudi Arabia 2030, that we realize that out of 22 um, main objectives for the vision, there is 15 is related either direct or indirect uh, to the supply chain and logistics, knowing that there is one specific point related to the uh, logistics which improving the ranking of Saudi Arabia from the position uh, 49 globally to 25 uh, and to be the first regionally. And unfortunately, by the time that the report or the vision was announced uh, last year in April, we were in position of 49. However, a few months later, when it's published the report by the um, uh, World Bank, we actually moved back uh, three positions as we ranked as a 52. So what is the LBI? Just to share very quick, and I believe most of you know that, the uh, LBI is the Logistics Performance Index, which is an interactive benchmark tool created to help countries in order to identify their challenges and opportunities. So again, the LBI, it depends on six main factors, which are uh, the customs uh, or the efficiency of customs clearance and the quality of trade transport infrastructures and the ease of arranging competitively priced shipments and the competency and quality of the logistics services, the ability of tracking consignments, and last is on-time delivery. Having a quick look on the latest report which issued in 2016, we will see that globally, we'll see Germany taking the first place, uh, uh, and then Luxembourg, Sweden, Netherlands, and Singapore. And the contribution of the logistics sector in Germany out of the total GDP is 10%, which is relatively high. We'll move to the region now. We'll see UAE place in the fairest place which uh, ranked 13 globally, and Saudi Arabia came second last just right before Kuwait, and globally, as I mentioned, actually we moved uh, one step back from 49 to 52. So, looking about uh, to the contribution of the logistics sector to the total GDP, we'll, find, we'll find that it's only three persons. However, this three persons, even it's not given us the right indication due to the, I don't know why, but the telecommunication is part of this three persons. 
Now, looking at the trend of Saudi Arabia for the last nine years, when the first uh, the report was published in 2007, we'll see a decline of the position of Saudi Arabia in the ranking of the LPI index. This uh, doesn't mean that we are getting worse or our services are getting worse. In a matter of fact, is in a matter of fact, is the competition is really aggressive. And based on the reports in the World Bank, uh, the main reason for countries who's taken high places on the ranking, they made a big jump. And the big jump, if we look again at the six factors, it doesn't have to do with the infrastructure, because usually, the infrastructure projects it takes long time, but mainly the focus in improving the efficiency and the effectiveness on the technology and the automation and mechanization. Right. Saudi Arabia, as we said, ranked in a relatively low ranking, but Looking at this report, we should be very ambitious because the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia ranked second right after China. And uh, that's in the Agility Logistics Emerging Markets Index, where we are even ahead of Brazil, India, UAE, and Russia. And this is something impressive. Actually, when I presented this uh, early last year, in February, I think, with the government, um, many government organizations attended that meeting. I was proposing a strategy for uh, the logistics for Saudi Arabia. They really uh, impressed and surprised by this result. Okay, looking at this uh, index, the logistics, uh, Agility Logistics Emerging Markets, it's mainly rank the emerging markets in terms of the size and the business condition, the infrastructure, and other factors uh, that interact uh, the investments by logistics companies in all modes, air, land, and sea freight, as well as the shipping agents. Right. Again, looking at the slides that we ranked in a low position, but at the same time, we have a huge potential based on the index we just see. So let's have a quick look. This is not all. This is only some of uh, the weaknesses and opportunities in order to evaluate ourselves and see how can we improve uh, in our ranking, and it's not only just the ranking, but how can we improve in our efficiency in order to achieve our goals as a country. I just put some of the main points related to the logistics and supply chain. So I just put some quick uh, main points related to the logistics, where we can see some of the opportunities as well as some of the weaknesses. Case A, connecting, and this was mentioned clearly on the vision uh, when it's announced. Case A is connecting three continents, Asia, uh, Asia uh, Africa, and Europe. 30% of the container movement uh, in the world is going through Saudi Arabia. And we not taking advantage of this, which inshallah this will be changed. 70% of the import export is through the 9C uh, ports and uh, case A. The port capacity is 500, the old port capacity is 540 million metric ton per year while in 2016, 
our actual utilized capacity is only 42 percent so here just to pause here it's not a matter of infrastructure we have actually in some areas good infrastructures but we have other issue which I will share in coming slides. The import value as a plan in 2020 was 330 billion versus actual in 2016 only 190 billion. And the export and export is one of the main objectives for us to transfer in order to increase the export of non-oil goods. The export as a plan 2020 was 825 or will be actually 825 billions versus actual in 2016 only 660 millions. The average container, now we move to the clearance, the average container clearance time in 2017 plan in Q4, five days, while the actual announced by the port and the customs clearance 11 days in my opinion as average overall even it's more than that uh, and we are moving based on the last events we have four weeks ago the head of the customs uh, 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 customs clearance uh, mr uh, his excellency ahmed al-hagmani confirmed personally uh, to me in the session we had that they already started the one day clearance for containers and they succeeded in parts of it. He mentioned the percentage, I cannot recall it now. Uh, the customs related to the physical check in 2018, next year, they planned to do only 20 person to be physically checked the actual in 2016 was 40 persons, while the international standards is five, only 5 persons. So still, even if we reduce it from 40 to 20, there is big room for improvement. Right. Based on our position and the weaknesses and the strength that, and the potential that we just uh, reviewed, uh, I again present, this is exactly the same slide which I present early last year, uh, actually sorry, two years ago to uh, the previous uh, transport minister and some other ministers and government and private uh, sector. I intentionally put the same slide to share with you today because I will be presenting this in a different way because two years ago we were very disappointed of the performance, of the efficiency, of the difficulties. Many vessels, they uh, prefer to go to our neighbors, either in Bahrain or Dubai, because of the inefficiency we have. However, some of the neighbor regionally, I do strongly believe that they took advantage of our inefficiency. This again, that's the same slide that I presented two years ago, but definitely I will be presenting in a different way now. As, as I mentioned two years ago, we were really disappointed, but now with the actually revolutionary changes happening in Saudi Arabia is uh, going to reflect positively on this. Right, so... I got four points. The first point is appropriate infrastructure, where actually, as I mentioned, we do have good infrastructure, but uh, in the railway side, we are having some uh, uh, issues, but it's fixed now, as we have a huge, I don't think this is working, Okay, uh, the uh, railway uh, network, this is a big area actually of challenge that we have, uh, where we had just very recent, few years ago, we had only, we, they call it actually the orphan line, the one between the Mam and Al-Kharj. Now we can see 
how it starts to expand. We got the Northern Line and very soon there is a lot of projects coming, around 10 projects. And as far as I know, there is uh, four uh, projects very soon will be uh, tendering. One of them actually is Yambu Jidda. Uh, the integrated logistics city, that's one of the main issues that we have. We didn't have logistics city, we have congestion, even we are not using the full capacity of the port, but still we have issues in, uh, in, in, in logistics city in terms of uh, the uh, capacity. Just recently, a few weeks ago, we heard about the logistics city will be or take position or placed in uh, the Mam near to King Abdelaziz port with a space of a million square meters. And this will be a real uh, logistics uh, village, including the free zone and the dry ports as well. Moving from the infrastructure to the efficiency and speed of procedures, where most of the company faced a lot of challenges related to that. In order to improve our efficiency and speed up the operations, as I said in, in the containers, uh, modern, using modern techniques and mechanization and automations, trained and skilled workforce. Because today I had a meeting with some of the management in the government. They are facing serious issues in having the capabilities where we have, for example, the company that I manage, I have workforce of 1,200 and none of them uh, got certification or graduated or his profession in supply chain uh, logistics. I'm talking about the different levels, not, not a master degree or bachelor or even diplomas or what they took while they are working some just courses related to that. Here where I believe Yambui University College will play a big role on this in order to supply, because I have seen uh, the curriculum and the subjects that uh, provided here, which is very much not only uh, academic, it's a practical as well and that's very important so they will have and play, play actually big role in supplying workforce to uh, this sector. Uh, attracting international uh, logistics companies and privatization. Talking about the privatization, privatization is a very successful model. Many developed uh, countries, if I talk specifically about the supply chain and logistics, they uh, moved to privatization a long time ago and the result and the outcomes was very uh, positive. Now, if we talk very quick, I'll just give a quick examples about the privatization. Looking at that, you will see the airports, for example, Medina Airport, privatized. Now, the ports, the ports actually, they were ahead of the game as they started 20 years ago for privatization, mainly for some operations and stevedoring inside the port. As a Rosco company, we having our second contract now, which is around we, our partnership with the port authority for the last 20 years. Uh, for the railway privatization, that's a very big development now. I don't know uh, if you heard about the session or the workshop was in Riyadh around maybe, I think, five weeks ago. Uh, I attended that and they presented two models of privatization. One related to the infrastructure, which will be, uh, will be in a PPP model, which is public-private uh, partnerships, and the other or the second uh, uh, part of the privatization will be on the operation and maintenance.
and this is big jump in privatization in this sector. Appropriate legislation and regulations. Here where we have really main issues before. We did not have any uh, centralization. Some people, if they cannot clear their goods, in example, King Abdelaziz port, they move it somewhere else and they can clear it because we don't have unified uh, rules and regulations. And again, in one of the conferences that I share information, again, many people were surprised that the regulations for the land uh, or the public transportation, for the land transportation, uh, did not updated since 1977. That's before even I born, long time ago. And most of the terms are out of date, where we are as a companies, we facing a lot of issues. However, the good news of most of you know that now they just published in their website the new regulation for the public uh, transportation is a draft, did not implement it yet. Uh, we attended many uh, meetings in order to review and update that and I believe during 2018 it will be implemented and it's really good one that's my personal opinion and we're talking about the governance who work on the ports for example you're dealing with different nine uh, government sectors and you have a lot of struggles and if you get approval from one entity you move to the next where you have the difficulties now i believe we are on the way and we're getting there about the governance in order to have one uh, window uh, or stop window where you can do all your uh, transactions through uh, a platform for example which we have now in uh, the port authority we have uh, tabadul as well as Tabadul will be integrated with other platforms in the uh, transport ministry. I don't know if you heard about Wassel and Naql. There will be an interface and integration between the systems where uh, it will be easier for everyone uh, to operate. Uh, the last but not least is the integrated logistics services uh, with value added. First, I will start with the second point, the high performance in government organizations. I believe already I covered that. And then the world-class uh, logistics solution companies. Uh, believe it or not, that till this moment in Saudi Arabia, we cannot have one entity have different services can provide it, where actually you cannot do warehousing or transportation with customs clearance. I don't know why. I, I, I raised these questions and we had many meetings with the governments that were everywhere else in other uh, developed countries in this area. You can have one company and you provide all the logistics services and here where it comes the 3PL companies. However, I got personal promise from the minister and the in-charge people in this area. They said, we are working on this because I said, we initiated this three years ago. Until this moment, we have a problem, but we got a final uh, promise, inshallah, from the minister, this will be fixed. So this is how you will attract a good company. Today, we are struggling. How many big companies, they, did they actually had to have a logistics departments or logistics SBU in their companies due to the unreliable companies for outsourcing in transportation, even in warehouses, and it's a very sensitive area. So they decided many companies such as Al Majdouri, Al Marai, Arasco, and many other companies. So in order to attract these will perform with a world-class logistics company, they 
need to have normal regulations and easy in order to operate uh, smoothly. This what personally I proposed area we need to work on. If we translate this to the Saudi map, just to make it possibly more simple, we will see that the ships coming on the ports on uh, Red Sea and uh, the Arabian uh, Gulf, where we have appropriate, as I mentioned, regulation, efficiency, and fast procedures. And we got a network and a railway connected the ports with the main cities and the uh, logistics uh, village, as well as uh, connecting to the main uh, roads. Then we have logistics city where we don't have uh, today, but it's already introduced, as I mentioned earlier. We'll have a logistics city that uh, can uh, have companies can add uh, our value added logistics services and free zone and dry ports. And the last destination will be through road trucks, where will be actually less loads on the road trucks where we're struggling now about the truck ban because we don't have other model of transportation. However, when the network expand on the railway, as I mentioned, we, it will contribute in a big volume. However, in most of the developed country in railway, uh, railway cannot contribute more than 20 to 25 percent from the total movement of materials. After looking of all what we went through, that I believe the efficiency of logistics performance is a powerful driver, there's no doubt, for sustainable economic growth and attracting and increasing the foreign trade, uh, trade in a global trade integration, that's telling us clearly the implementation of the ambitious vision of Saudi Arabia in economic uh, transformation is linked directly to the improvement of the efficiency of logistics. Now I'm going to take you uh, through very quick um, case study which explaining the importance of the collaboration between the private sector and the government sector in order to achieve our goals and objectives in the vision. And I couldn't have a better company to talk about than the company that I'm working for, which is uh, Arasco. So for those who don't know Arasco, I'll just give you a quick uh, brief on Arasco. Arasco was established in uh, 1983. Uh, and it's a closed joint stock company with a capital of 650 millions and the size of the company is 3,000 employees. One, uh, it was ranked uh, last year as one of the top com 10 companies in Saudi Arabia to work for in terms of uh, working environment. And it was also ranked as one of the top 60 companies in Saudi Arabia in terms of revenue. The corporate mission of the company is to support food security in a sustainable way in the MENA region and the strategy is diversity in area that complement and or benefit from the portfolio. So what is the portfolio of um, Alaska? Arasco consists of six SPUs. Without going into details, we got Arasco feed, it's animal nutrition, and it's the largest in the region and among the top 20 feed millers in the world. We have Arasco food. Arasco food is a poultry company and the brand name is Intaj. Uh, Arasco Food is a key producer of the broiler uh, in KSA with a capacity of 120 million birds per year. 
moving to Mifsku. Mifsku is a JV between Cargill, which is the biggest uh, food company in the world, and Arasco. And it has capacity of 340,000 metric ton, and it's uh, uh, food ingredients and solutions. We get a Lamar International. Uh, it's uh, farm inputs and solutions. We have IDAC, it's a JV between IDAC and Miracus, the French company, which is actually the biggest and most reliable lab in the region. And last but not least is Arasco Logistics, where we have a joint venture with uh, Bahri tra Sea Transport. And we are providing solution and I will zoom in a little bit in Arasco Logistics. So here in this slide, I will just explain the partnership between Arasco Logistics and the government sectors. So we have one of the companies because again, Arasco consists of six SPUs. One of the SPUs, Arasco Logistics, is consists of three sub companies. We have the shipping company and the shipping agency where as I mentioned earlier it's a joint venture with Bahri. We own five uh, Panamax vessels with the capacity of 80,000 metric ton and we are moving very soon to uh, increase our fleet to 20 ships. We have the BHP or the stevedoring handling and storage. We have a contract, as I mentioned, with the port for the last 20 years. Uh, and we, in addition to that, we operate our private Perth in King Abdelaziz port with a storage capacity of 420 metric ton. And the last department or company we have here is the land transportation and it's a road trucks as well as rail wagon. We do have two terminal, one in King Abdelaziz port in the map and one in uh, Al Kharj or in Harad uh, road. We have more than 600 uh, trucks and around uh, 800 trailers and we have 200 uh, bulk wagons. And here you can see, and this is my message or my point of this case study here, before moving to the integrated supply chain, you can see the partnership in the shipping with the private sector, in the ports, with the port authority, transportation, with the railway, and we have a relationship with the railway for the last 30 years. Here you can see the operation inside uh, the port in the MAM. You can see this is the port to link and how we do the uh, stevedoring uh, from the vessel going direct. Here is it's more clear if you can see it. It's going to our terminal. We got terminal one and we got terminal two, which uh, in birth 37. Also, we are operating in birth one, two, and three. Here, I will take you through the current supply chain. And this is our subject of today, the supply chain. And even we start before that, because now we are investing on the raw materials in countries as Ukraine, uh, Argentina, uh, Brazil, uh, in order to secure the raw materials in terms of volume, requirements, demands, and quality as well. And we have our own vessels, as I said, ships. We imported in 2017 uh, 3 million metric ton, going through the Sivadoring, the one I shared the picture with you, in King Abdelaziz port. And from here, we move the raw material to our demand feed mill through trucks today around 1.4 and some raw materials going direct it's like trading selling to the customers 600,000 metric ton and we have 700,000 going to Al Kharj by truck and by railway 
300,000, it's not bad. It's contributing around 30% of what we transport to Al Kharaj, but our ambition and dreams is way bigger than that. You will see it in the next slide. Going to our feed millers and from our feed millers, that's the green uh, arrows mean is a finished goods going to the customers and around 100,000 metric ton we export to the GCC. Right, we already mentioned there's a very good relation and partnership and collaboration between the private and the government, uh, 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 between Arasco and the public sector uh, as the port authority and the railway. This is good at this stage, but with the development happening, with the big uh, changing, uh, we going to see, inshallah, in the near future, that we need to strengthen this relationship and increase our volume. So how we will do that? Two quick points. We have the railway expansion, where today we don't have express railway going to our factory in Al Kharaj. Already we sign and we have agreements with the railway and we got new railway wagons. We will have uh, express train without going to the uh, tower uh, control. It will go direct to our terminal in Al Kharaj moving 3 million metric ton and also in the MAM where we already have the infrastructure just we need to work on the loading and unloading uh, points just to upgrade that's to move 2 million by uh, train and then the finished goods from the factory to a gig distribution terminal inshallah and talking about this we moving dozen of trucks from uh, the road. The second point of the expansion and the pursuing of improving our capacity is with the port. As you can see, by the way, this is our terminal, the railway terminal in the MAM port. We have the warehouses in Terminal 2, Terminal 1, and this is the new terminal. Today, our storage capacity in uh, only the MAM port is around 420,000 metric ton where we can uh, accommodate around 5 or retain 5 uh, million metric ton per year. We going to expand and have phase 3 already we signed with the port and inshallah we'll start the project soon. This will increase the storage capacity up to 1 million metric ton. So how it's going to be, absolutely it's a gradually, it's not in 2000 uh, or 2023 20, where we already started. We will increase from three importing, three million metric ton to seven millions. I will focus on the railway and instead of 300, it will increase to 3 million, to Al Kharaj, to the MAM, 2 million, and exporting either by road or by sea around 1.5 million. And this is worth of value around 1.2 billion Saudi Riyal. This will. Uh, impact on a benefits to the company as well as the country in the first place where we'll have food security increase the exports and this is one of the main actually uh, objectives in uh, the Saudi uh, financial uh, transformation development and increase the capital investments strength the kingdom brand where I believe most of you heard about uh, Riyadh initiative by the government where uh, uh, they want actually to uh, support the local big companies in order to strengthen the brand of Saudi Arabia where we can export and operate internationally 
Last and not least is the job creation. And this definitely will uh, have a very positive impact on the country. This business case study is showing you that the private sector by itself cannot do well as well as the government. We need this collabora uh, collaboration and Arasco, it might be a good example because we start an early stage, 30 years with the railway, 20 years with uh, the Port uh, Authority. And I think this is all what I have for today. Thank you very much for your listening and sorry if I took longer time. Thank you very much.